Thank you, and thanks for this honor to be able to uh, share the stage with so many articulate and passionate students. Uh, this is really a very special opportunity for me. Uh, I'm going to speak to you about something that uh, here at Carrollwood Day School you may have difficulty comprehending, uh, and that is, will schools like Carrollwood be around in the future? Now, this is a school that's thriving. New buildings have been built, enrollment is growing, and so it's kind of hard to imagine, well, of course, Carrollwood will be here forever, but will it? The reason I raise this question is um, I've spent my career in education. I've worked in higher education, I've been a professor, I've worked in public education, I've worked in charter schools, which is another form uh, of public education, I've worked in education technology, and now I'm working in independent schools, and I absolutely love it. And I travel all over the country, I've been personally over two years in about 135 independent schools, and I've seen wonderful things. But in my job at the National Association of Independent Schools, where we represent 1,500 independent schools all over the country, and that's part of a universe of independent schools of about 3,000, we have to worry and think about the future of independent schools and what independent schools need to do to be able to thrive. So I'm going to begin with some kind of grim statistics. I know it's early in the morning to hear something that's depressing, and I'm not going to end on a depressing note, I assure you. But here goes. Over the last decade, the number of students attending private schools of any kind in this country has declined from 6 million to 5.2 million. And this is while the student population is growing. So a smaller percentage as well as a smaller number of students are attending schools like this now than just a decade ago. Charter schools, which have been booming in Florida and around the country, charter schools now serve 2.2 million students. Remember I said private schools serve 5.2? Charter schools serve 2.2 million students, and charter schools were only invented 20 years ago. That's a staggering rate of growth. And there are 6,000 of these schools now in 42 states, plus the District of Columbia. In addition, online learning is booming. 500,000 students now get their education, their high school education, completely online. Homeschooling, also thriving. 1.8 million students. 1.8 million students, that's the third as many as are in private schools of all kinds, are now being educated at home, and all kinds of families are doing this. And then what about independent schools? What about schools just like Carrollwood? Well, among the 1,500 that are part of the National Association of Independent Schools, well, the good news is that one-third of them are growing, and one-third of them are stable, have about the same enrollment, but one-third of them are losing students. And that's pretty scary. One-third is a lot of schools. Now, if you look at the statistics on average, you could say, well, on average, independent schools are doing fine. But the averages don't mean anything if you're in a school that's in decline. A good friend of mine, an education scholar by the name of Chester Finn, who went to Exeter, one of the great independent schools, uh, whose children went to independent schools, whose grandkids are in independent schools, and is one of the great friends of independent and other private schools two years ago, wrote an article in the Atlantic magazine with the title, Why Private Schools Are Dying Out. <laughs> now imagine one of the great scholar friends of private schools pronouncing schools like this dead. This is scary. So, those are grim statistics. But two years ago, I agreed to join the independent school community. And I'm not an idiot. So why did I decide I wanted to be in the independent school community? Why was I so optimistic that this is the place to be at this point in time? And I'm going to give you several reasons. And they are reasons why I believe that private schools in general and independent schools in particular are going to play a bigger and bigger role in our, in our future. 
Every school in America, in fact, every school around the world, faces fundamental challenges right now. And the schools that are going to have the brightest future are the schools that meet these challenges most successfully. The first one's pretty obvious. Where are the great teachers going to come from? You know, the essence of a great school is great teachers. Researchers have shown that a terrific teacher can absolutely change students' lives. Now, I know we don't like to boil everything down to test scores, and I certainly don't like to boil everything down to test scores, but what research shows is that if a student who is a mediocre performer spends three consecutive years with a great teacher, that that student will move typically from being a mediocre student to a strong student. 50 percentiles on a nationally normed test. On, the, on an SAT in math or verbal, that's like moving from 500 to 700. That's the difference that great teachers can make. Now, where are the great teachers of the future going to come, where it come from? And where are they going to want to teach? Well, the answer is that teachers want most to work in schools where they're treated like professionals, where they are respected for the knowledge and skill that they bring to the classroom, where they are involved in decisions about how the school is going to run, where their performance is judged in a well-rounded way and not just based on test scores. The schools that are going to thrive in the future are the schools that are able to attract and retain the best teachers. Our public schools, where I've spent a lot of time, have been moving down a very dangerous and counterproductive path with teachers. The evaluation of teachers is now increasingly based on student test scores. And student test scores are not unimportant, but they're a really lousy way to make judgments about teachers if that's all you're looking at. And this is driving teachers out of public education and out of education altogether. The schools that are going to thrive in the future are schools like independent schools that treat teachers with respect, that treat them like professionals, that bring them in and trust them to make decisions about curriculum and instruction, that organize them into teams to shape what you as students and you as families get to enjoy in a school. I have very little faith that public education is going to take the steps that are necessary to attract and retain the best teachers in America in the future. I have a great deal of confidence that independent schools will do that because great teachers are best for great students and families who are paying tuition to come to private schools and other independent schools will not do so unless the schools are fabulous for students. And that requires making the right decisions about teachers. Another reason is the students themselves. You know, schools today are educating young people for a future that is changing so rapidly, so rapidly that we can't predict it. The jobs that young people in schools today are going to fulfill when they get out into the real world, so to speak, in many cases don't even exist today. You know, experts predict that young people, when they get into the workforce, are going to have many, many jobs and careers over the course of a lifetime. They're not going to go to college and then move into a company or a profession and stay there for 40 years. Everything's changing so rapidly. And the skills that students need, we hear talk about the importance of collaboration and creativity and so forth, so-called 21st century skills, which is a goofy term now that we're well into this century. Why don't we call them this century skills, right? You know, this is not the future, it's now. So the challenge that all schools face is, well, what should education look like to prepare students for the future? Should we, in particular, organize students into grade levels and move them in batches through school as if every student is the same and every student needs the same thing? Should a high school curriculum be organized into courses that last 180 days and take 45 minutes a day? I mean, these are ideas for school organization that go back centuries. And here we are in the 21st century, 
and high school graduation requirements don't look, like, look that different from what they did 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 75 years ago. When are we going to, as schools and school leaders, change the educational process so that students are able to develop as individuals whose individual talents are respected? So that when students leave school and go to college and go out into the workplace, they're able to continuously learn on their own. When is this going to happen and who is going to do this? Well, once again, I come back to the public versus private distinction. Public schools right now are completely consumed with a debate about what reading and math skills should be. The common core, you hear that term a lot? It's a major debate in public education about reading and math standards. This is important, but it's just the beginning. We need as educators to be thinking seriously about the future. And less of that is happening in public schools than in independent schools. In my two years in independent schools, traveling the country, visiting school after school, I have seen far more creativity, far more dedicated effort to understand the future and to modify education so that our schools meet the needs of kids. And I'm confident that that's going to continue. Something else that's happening in this country that is a major challenge for every school is that the country is rapidly becoming, is already, extraordinarily diverse. The majority of kindergartners in America's schools are now children of color. And the demographic trends in this country show this country becoming only ever more diverse. Now, despite the fact that this country is often referred to as a melting pot, our schools and our education system, and this is public and private, have not always distinguished themselves in being able to serve everybody and be able, being able to meet the demands of diversity and provide inclusive and, edu and inc inclusive and equitable education for everybody. This is a challenge that, as a country, we have not met. And there's a shameful history associated with this, especially when it comes to race. But as the country becomes more and more diverse, schools must meet this challenge. We are graduating young people into a diverse America. We are graduating students into a diverse world. And schools must meet this challenge, bringing together all kinds of students from different backgrounds to work together and to learn together. Once again, our public schools have struggled to do this. Public schools, despite lots and lots of reform, are still highly segregated because they're based on residence. You may be surprised to know that independent schools, which charge tuition and which are not as accessible as a free public school are far more diverse than public schools. 30% of the young people in independent schools are students of color. Now, we need to do better than that, but that is the right trajectory to be on. Now, some people will say, well, there is the financial issue. You know, how are we going to be socioeconomically diverse? How are we going to reach all kinds of kids if our tuitions keep going up? Well, independent schools are very generous with financial aid, but beyond that, the price of an independent school has gone up quite a bit. But it went up during the 90s and 2000s when the economy was booming and there was, in fact, more demand for independent schools than there was supply. I'm a big believer in the marketplace. Tuitions will correct themselves to meet market demand, and I am much more confident that independent schools than any other schools will become the schools that are known for serving all kids and being inclusive. And then the final thing that I want to emphasize about which schools are going to succeed in the future is well illustrated by Carrollwood. You know, schools are not brain factories. They are not just about academics. And in fact, any school that sees itself as a 
largely academic institution is going to fail. Because the fact of the matter is that students are not motivated to learn because if they don't work hard, they won't get into a good college, or if they don't work hard, they won't make a lot of money, or whatever the case may be. That's way down the road. Students and adults alike are motivated intrinsically to care about what they're doing because they're part of a community that cares as well. Part of a community that has strong moral values. Part of a community that helps students understand that part of good character is respect and responsibility. Students don't learn as a means to an end. Students learn because they are part of a community that loves them, that values them, and reinforces their growth. Once again, when we look at public education, we find public schools struggling to come to any agreement about what values should be taught in schools. It's a very difficult thing to do in a public system. In independent schools, by contrast, every single independent school, every single other kind of private school was created with a mission to develop students in a well-rounded way. The wonderful thing, the wonderful thing about independent schools is that they are not only about helping young people become smarter, but they are about helping young people become better, to live a good life and to understand that happiness comes not from academic achievement, but happiness and a fulfilling life comes from being a good person. And which schools are going to do that? Which schools are going to be able to serve our young people in that way? It's our independent schools. So for all of these reasons, the ability to attract great teachers, the ability to plan school that's consistent with what students need in the future, the ability to serve students of all kinds, and the ability to help students develop into good people. These are all the reasons why I think independent schools will thrive. Now, lest you think that I'm here just cheerleading independent schools, I want to say one final thing, and that is that these are challenges that all of our schools face. Public schools, charter schools, other kinds of private schools, independent schools. We all face them. And it is my hope and my belief that as all schools try to meet these challenges, that the future will find all of America's schools stronger and with independent schools providing leadership. Thank you.